everybody, welcome inside the State Champ Sports Network studio for another update in our Total Softball 2019 Player of the Year race. We are getting fired up. Donnie Dreyer is here because we are now getting to the real meat of the competition. We are just a week away from freezing our top 10. However, you guarantee that there are gonna, there's gonna be some movement before that happens. Multiple changes, I really believe this. Multiple, multiple changes. changes. And, and, and here's why I say that, Lauren, is that when we look at this, uh, the full list of the, uh, the candidates, yeah. um, somebody that's on a team that maybe is a 500 team and maybe they don't play a great competition, they've gotta be head and shoulders above anyone else to be able to have a chance of winning player of the year. We don't see that. We see some great numbers, but we don't see anybody in that group. So it's really gonna come down to some of our candidates that are playing on uh, teams that are very successful, teams that have a chance of going very far into the tournament. And, and those are the biggest games. And those Obviously. are the biggest games. And then even when we look at that, and we break down that list, there's nobody that's clearly a front runner. Right. You know, there's not a Megan Bobian out there that is clearly a front runner. So this this thing is up for up for grabs. Yeah, it's wide open. You got to see some tournament action this past weekend. Yeah, I got a chance both to get out to the Michigan Challenge out in Canton and then on the Ann Arbor tournament and saw some great stuff. At the Michigan Challenge, what I did find out is it's really important on what field you're on because one field the wind's blowing in and the other field the wind's blowing out. Right. But we saw some great stuff and Wall Lake Northern is hitting their stride. They, they dominated and Jenna Kroll continues to kill it. She's up to 19 home runs hitting over 600. Uh, so she's, you know, a little preview, she's a kid that very easily could be on that top 10 list when, when we freeze it. Yeah. And then over in Ann Arbor, I mean, there were so many good teams in Ann Arbor. We saw Gabby Salad just pitch a gem, uh, a no-hitter against South Lyon. And then uh, we saw Clarkson come back and, and beat Escanaba. Right. And they were looking great, but the ones that really stole the show was uh, Heartland. Heartland and, you know, Rachel Everett yeah. had two big wins beating Howell and beating Clarkston. So there's a kid, that, another preview, that she has a really good chance of seeing herself back into the back into the top 10. Yeah, and you are personally hosting a big event this weekend. Yeah, we got some of those teams that are gonna be there and it's gonna really give a chance. Gabby Sherman, who was on our list, is on our watch list, she's gonna have an excellent chance. Got a great schedule for her to see what she can do against the big teams because we know Millington could make a run and win the state tournament yeah. and it would be uh, in large part to Gabby Sherman. So it's going to be a big weekend for her and her teammates to, to see what they do uh, this coming Saturday. And if people want to come out, it's the, uh, what do you call it, the backyard? We call it the backyard at our Total Sports Wixom facility out yeah. in uh, out in Wixom. And we call it the backyard because it's uh, behind all the domes and uh, the backside of the property. It's going to be a great event and some great talent out there. So we're looking forward to yeah, it. So yeah, so awesome to have kind of that, it's almost like playoffs that if you lose, you're still in. But it feels like playoffs because they start the next Monday, yeah. you know what I mean? That week, the district start. The whole idea, and most coaches buy into this, we need to see great pitching, we need to see great competition. That's the best way that we prepare for the state tournament. Yeah, no, that's what you're going to see is those tough games. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. All right, so some of the favorites. Yeah, the, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of favorites because there's, there's not a clear cut one. Um, let's look at Howe for a second. I call the four-legged monster, four-headed monster there. You know, they've got Militello, they've got Wolverton, they've got Gillette, they've got Molly Carney. Somebody from that Howe team is going to be on our top ten. And again, Howe, uh, you know, I think they're ranked two right now. They've got an excellent chance of winning it. And if one of those four kids take off, they could be there. Clarkston, they got their own four-headed monster. Right now, Hannah Cady kind of leads it. One of those kids are going to be on that top 10 for sure when we freeze it and have a chance to take their team to a, to a state championship. Uh, another one would be Grace Leto. She's just absolutely killing it, absolutely killing it. And she's doing it, uh, her coach is doing the right thing. They're not over pitching her. She's going three, four innings and if the game's in hand, they're taking out. The girl could have umpteen no hitters. Right, right, right. Uh, but she's, she's been dominant, and obviously they have a great chance of going a long way. And maybe, I'm not going to call it a front runner, but a name that comes up a lot is Gabby Sala with Escanaba. She just faced great competition in Ann Arbor, and um, she's a kid that definitely can win it that we're going to uh, solidly keep our eyes on. And then if, uh, someone like a Lauren Esman, who's now doing it with the bat and pitching, if she can go out and pull the upset against Howell in the regionals, um, all of a sudden, She's, uh, she's right there in the top four and has a chance to win it. It's just so many, so many names. Yeah, no doubt about it. And again, every game matters. You know, every matchup matters. 
Uh, this week and this weekend is going to determine who is in our final top 10. Then it's frozen. Those are the candidates moving forward. Uh, as far as the final four goes, we are going to announce that we want to get through regionals. Uh, we have to yeah. before the, the final four is chosen. So Monday, June 10th, we will pick our final four. And then we will, during the course of that week, most likely, you know, right around finals time, we will then declare our champion. So uh, that is how it is. As far as the contest goes, and that means the fan contest, Brooke Nadalny, over 12,000 votes right now. Uh, Maggie Murphy, just over 9,300. So that is where the competition is at. Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, the Nadalny fans are, are starting to put her over the top, uh, but there's still a lot of time in order to get to our final four. So we're saying we're gonna pick that on Monday, June 10th. We won't freeze the vote until just before that. So uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, still get uh, your votes in there for your favorite. And uh, again, it matters and uh, uh, it, it's great. And what Brooke has done in her career is amazing. And uh, it's not over yet. So uh, we shall see if somehow that national record can somehow uh, be approached. It would be uh, quite a few. Uh, but again, uh, it's a fantastic season. Keep voting online. Uh, get out to the games. The weather's going to be really warm, I believe, by towards the end of this week. Yes. And uh, hopefully the rain's going to stay away. Uh, if you want to get out to the backyard at Total, Wixom, or Total Softball in Wixom, uh, I think you're guaranteed a great time. Absolutely. All right, so check it out, and we will talk to you guys next week with our final 